A long road to success. The creation of America's beloved Blue Ridge Parkway. The Blue Ridge Parkway is the most visited national park in the United States of America, topping both the Grand Canyon and the Yellowstone National Park combined. More than 15 million tourists visit the beautiful scenery of the parkway each year. The Blue Ridge Parkway is a very important part of U.S. history for it is one of the few strictly scenic highways in the United States that helps people explore rural Appalachia. The Blue Ridge Parkway instigated exchanges of different kinds of wealth, land, jobs, and cultures. The Great Depression and the need for jobs spurred the creation of the parkway during that time. The thought was that a scenic parkway linking the Great Smoky Mountains and the Shenandoah National Park was a great way to provide jobs. Parks were not only places that protected beautiful resources, but they were also places where economic benefits would be derived by the community surrounding the parks. It took many years to fully plan and eventually build the Blue Ridge Parkway, with encounters between government agencies such as the Civilian Conservation Corps and Public Works Administration and landowners, including Native Americans and other residents of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Although many people who lived along the scenic highway were displaced or had their land cut in half and there was much controversy on gaining land for it, the Blue Ridge Parkway is still an important part of many people's lives today. During the Great Depression, Appalachia, already a poor area, was in need of job opportunities more than ever. Many people who lived in the Appalachian Mountains were largely cut off from society and before the Blue Ridge Parkway, transportation opportunities were described as dismal. So, traveling in Appalachia was slow, difficult, and expensive. Rural Appalachia was isolated from modern technology, therefore a road was essential to help the Blue Ridge gain access to the modern world. The stock market crashed in 1929, leaving America without jobs and with less money. Appalachia was especially affected by this because it put their economy in even worse shape than it had been. Ideas for the Blue Ridge Parkway had been forming for 20 years before it was officially proposed to President Roosevelt by Senator Harry Byrd in the summer of 1933, although the exact originator of the idea is unknown. The Great Smoky Mountains and the Shenandoah National Park were both fairly new at the time. Building a scenic parkway to link the two was a great idea, especially when many jobs were needed. After years of spreading the word and planning, the building of the Blue Ridge Parkway had begun. Now that the idea for the Blue Ridge Parkway had been established, the government and the National Park Service had to start finding people to fund and build it. The initial plan called for $7,500,000. The Civilian Conservation Corps, also known as the CCC, gave jobs to young men during the Great Depression. There were four CCC camps along the Blue Ridge Parkway. The National Park Service, the Public Works Administration, and the Works Progress Administration all had very important roles in building the parkway as well. The National Park Service helped plan the Blue Ridge Parkway and owned it once it was completed. The Public Works Administration, the Works Progress Administration, and the Federal Bureau of Public Roads helped build and fund it. In building the Blue Ridge Parkway, these planners, builders, and funders encountered a beautiful but very hard and strenuous landscape and the project took roughly 50 years to complete. The planning and building had to be very precise. The parkway was carefully designed and landscaped by Stanley Abbott and R. Getty Browning to achieve a perfect natural look. R. Getty Browning, he walked the length of the parkway deciding exactly where the Blue Ridge Parkway should be located. Then when the time came, the actual parkway was constructed mostly by private contractors. The government called for bids from many different contractors and then chose the best deal. Many challenges faced the builders of the Blue Ridge Parkway. Landslides were common along the parkway while it was in construction, especially in North Carolina. They had to find a way to locate the parkway so that it was still beautiful on either side of the parkway, that they did not do cuts and fills like you see way too often, you know, as roads pass through our countrysides. Builders explored new ways to preserve the landscape without using land cuts and explosions. The building of the parkway was a struggle, but in the end, the road became a beautiful parkway that showcased the most stunning views in the Blue Ridge Mountains. However, nothing comes without a price. In exchange for this national treasure, many landowners were forced to sell or give away large sections of their land towards the creation of the Blue Ridge Parkway. Families' lives were just completely turned over. They had their land, they lived simple lives. Some people had stores or a post office or something like that, but most of the people, who, at least who I've studied, were farmers. They always regretted that they had to leave. And so it not only impacted 
people back in the 30s and 40s when they were actually leaving, but then it impacted generations of their families afterward. Many people were in favor of the Bullard Parkway until they found out that it wasn't a commercial road and wouldn't be of any use to them. There were and still are no commercial vehicles allowed on the parkway. Isolated people wanted a road to carry their product to town, not a scenic parkway that wouldn't provide jobs. In addition to the fact that they couldn't really use the parkway for transportation of goods, people didn't like the fact that it took so much of their property. In some cases, the parkway would go through the middle of someone's property, but leave no way to get to the other side. If someone's house was where the Blue Ridge Parkway was to go, then it had to be moved. There was a huge four or five year fracas over the parkway section through Little Switzerland, North Carolina, that which was owned by, it was a little resort development that was owned by somebody who was serving on the North Carolina Supreme Court at the time, super well connected in North Carolina politics. His name was Harriet Clarkson, and he made all these outlandish declarations about the effects of the parkway on Little Switzerland if it came through there, and, and really created a lot of trouble, and ultimately contested the land acquisition, and it went through the courts right up to the door of the, yes, North Carolina Supreme Court, where he recused himself from a decision that upheld a big settlement for him and a reduction of the right of way through Little Switzerland to 200 feet. Harriet Clarkson was forced to sell some of his land in exchange for $25,000, a narrow right of way, and access for tourists to get to his Little Switzerland vacation area. Although Clarkson supported the Blue Ridge Parkway as a whole, he did not agree with it going through his own land. Clarkson resisted the government, but finally was forced to give away his land, although the right-of-way in that area was much narrower than the rest of the parkway. Grandfather Mountain, a scenic travel attraction owned by Hugh Morton and commonly referred to as the Missing Link, was another instance where someone wouldn't give up their property. Morton had a private business on the mountain, so when the government asked for his land, he refused. It was a struggle, but finally the government got the land from Hugh Morton. This was the last piece of land that the government needed to finish the building of the Blue Ridge Parkway. Thus, it was nicknamed the Missing Lake. Even though the loss of land for the parkway angered many of the residents of the Blue Ridge Mountains, it was an essential exchange that led to the Blue Ridge Parkway's finished product. The National Park Service also had a very difficult time getting the land they needed that went through the land of the Eastern Band of Cherokees. The Blue Ridge Parkway was planned to run through the Koala Boundary, which was a valley that was very good for farming. When it was first proposed, most Cherokees were against the parkway. Basically, the first reaction from Cherokee was, what are you talking about? You know, coming in here, taking um, this huge swath of land through, we don't, the rest of the reservation is very hilly, you're going to take the main developable land, it's not even going to be of any use, and sort of similar complaints really to what a lot of landowners had. The plan was voted down for five years under Cherokee leader Fred Bauer. Many Native Americans thought the Blue Ridge Parkway was just part of a plan to show them off to the public, which is what they also thought of the Indian New Deal. After five years of getting turned down, the National Park Service was still trying to convince the Cherokees to give up their land. Fred Bauer got voted out and with the new leader, Jarrett Blythe, the Cherokees came to an agreement with the National Park Service. The Blue Ridge Parkway would run on a ridge near the valley, so the Cherokees were able to keep most of their land. The final agreement involved the exchange of land for the Blue Ridge Parkway for $40,000 and the deeds to the right of way. They had changed them by introducing tourism and introducing them to the cultural practices, which is like businesses. The Blue Ridge Parkway has made a large historic impact not only on Appalachia, but also the rest of the U.S. When it was started in the 1930s, the Blue Ridge Parkway was a way to connect two national parks and provide jobs for people in rural Appalachia. At the time of the Great Depression, even a low-paying job, like the ones offered by the Civilian Conservation Corps, was important to families. The parkway was finished in the 1980s, taking about 50 years to build and complete. Now, the Blue Ridge Parkway is still an important part of many people's lives, providing a peaceful place to come and get out of the stress of daily life and enjoy the beauty of the Blue Ridge Mountains. The parkway also provides a way to explore U.S. history and the cultures of people who have lived in Appalachia. The Blue Ridge Parkway is now a beautiful scenic highway. Let it continue to be an important and interesting part of the United States of America's history.